All right, so, so let's just talk about what we mean when we say relationships. What are we talking about? Tom. Um, the relationship about the connection. Connection, inside yeah. Inside the database. OK, inside the database, yeah. So what are we typically connecting? This table related to another table. There you go. Yeah, I can yeah. see it was on the tip of your tongue. So yeah. we're typically connecting different tables, right? Table. Or different types of objects. Yeah. Okay, cool. All right, so what different types of relationships do we have, Brian? Uh, one to many and many to many. Okay. There's also another one, too, that, that we're not really going to talk about much today, but what is that? One to one, right? Yeah, exactly. All right, so that one we're not really going to cover today, but again, today we're going to be doing one-to-many and many-to-many. -many. What would be an example of a one-to-many relationship? Well, a dojo, dojo and a many students. Okay, good. That's a good one. What is it? He said a dojo with many students. So the one would be the dojo, right? And then the many would be the students. Okay. Great. Um, how about another one to many, Keanu? Location have many uh, people. Like, like you mean like a dojo and students? Yeah. Okay. All right, all right. Is that? No? I mean, it's kind of like the same example, though, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, it, it's yeah. still applicable. Sure. Oh, is that what he said? Yeah, saying? exactly. <laughs> yeah, so he said, don't you have any students? You got one more? Did he yeah. say that? I <laughs> swear. I'm, like, so tired. Uh, like, uh, posts that has many comments. That's a good one. That's a really good one. Nice. Excellent. That's what I meant. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that's what you meant. Sorry. Okay. I got my black belt. Yeah, yeah, black belt done, right? Okay, let's talk about a many-to-many -many relationship, all right? What does that mean, Anthony? Uh, I'm going to think of an example of like one, uh, one person can have many interests and many people can have many interests for the same reason. Okay, okay, yeah, so so usually when we talk about the relationship, we want to talk about it from both sides, right? So we'd say something like, a person can have many interests, an interest can, be part of many can have many people, yeah, like who are interested in it, right? Okay, good. Um, maybe one more example of a many-to-many. -many. Alex. I don't know how this works, but uh, an author could have many books, and the book could have many authors. That does work, right? Yeah. yeah. Did you get that from the platform? <laughs> that sounds familiar. I saw somewhere. That sounds familiar. All right. Yeah. No worries. All right. Books and authors. Yeah. It sounds sounds very familiar. <laughs> so yeah, let, let's come up with one one other example. Here's, here's one that I was thinking about. So how about people and languages? Um, right? So a person can speak multiple languages, and obviously a language can be spoken by, you know, tons and tons of people. So yeah, there's a many to many. Yes. On the platform it said like when trying to figure it out, that it has to make sense. So I kind of didn't make sense when, when I said it. So like, a person can have many interests, that makes sense. But an interest can have many, many persons. Yeah. That, like, that doesn't really make sense. You know? Yeah, well, it's, I mean, if you word it in a certain way, it could, could be, so maybe you could say a interest could have many 
interesters. <laughs> like an interest you can, I don't know. That's not going to work. Never mind. Obvious. <laughs> yeah, obvious. Okay. All right. So, um, so now that we've kind of talked about the what, now we want to talk about the how, right? So we kind of get what, what these concepts mean. Let's see how we can put them into action. So if I was going to make this in a SQL diagram, how would I do this? So, um, yeah, hold, hold on one second. Let's start with users, right? Because yesterday, we're, we're basically just going to build off what we did yesterday. So yesterday we had this user table, right? So I can create my user table in here. And let's just call this users. Okay. You guys remember we had the old ID, primary key, auto increment that guy. It was, oh, why did that uncheck? That was weird. All right, yeah, let's do our old first name, last name. We had an email in there, right? Okay. Cool. Timestamps. Right, so we'll do date time here. Updated at our old favorite, favorite color. Yeah, there we go. It's always a good one. Okay, cool. So we've got our users table here. Now, um, what, what I've drawn on the board here is basically what we're going to try to build in the ORM. So we're going to have this situation where a user can have multiple cars. All right? Okay. And then also a user can belong to multiple teams. All right? Teams referring to? Yes. So maybe, like, I was, I was thinking maybe it could be teams of, you know how you guys do morning algorithms every day? So maybe you're on a different team each day. So you're not, you're, you have multiple teams because today you're with this group of people, tomorrow you're with me. Oh, um, okay. Okay. All right. And then a team can have more than one user. Right. Okay, cool. But a car is only connected to one user. Okay, so if I create a car, that's only going to belong to one person. That's just on a hypothetical situation. Yeah, because, mm -hmm. I mean, well, yeah, yeah. okay, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Were you, you trying to say like a car can belong to multiple people or something yeah, like that? I mean, okay, yeah, I know, I know. <laughs> yeah. We're just kind of, yeah. we're simplifying a little bit, yeah. So you're doing one to many and then many to many? Yeah, so let's talk about what this means. So, so right here in Lambda, what type of relationship do we have between user and car? Yeah, it's one to many. One to many, right? One user, many cars. Okay. How about the relationship between a user and team? It's also one to many. Sure. Um, many, right? Many is larger. Okay. So look, a user can have many teams, right? Or can be on many teams. A team can have many. So what's, what kind of relationship is that? Oh, that's a many to many. Many Yeah, because we've got the many going on both sides, right? Okay, cool. And then this was just what, what kind of relationship? Well, but again, a user can have many cars, right? It just means that each car is only associated with one user. All right, so let's make this. So we need to make a uh, car table too, right? Let's do that. Okay. What are we going to have in this cars table? Uh, Would you say age? ID. Oh, ID. Okay, okay, good. And then, uh, like make and model. Yeah, make and model. That's solid. Model. Yeah, let's just do year and then kind of go from there. So we'll say this is a um, some sort of an int field, right? Okay, we've got our regular created at date time. And then we've got our updated at, right? Date time. Okay, cool. Um, close that out. So how do we establish this relationship? What we said is that a user can have many cars, right? Okay. So how are we going to do that? Do you guys remember how to do this in, in MySQL Workbench? That's the uh, second, the 
ones. This guy right here, right, the little one to n, and then we start from the many and go back to the one, right? Okay. So let's do that. Okay. So there we go. And notice how what that did for us is that in the many, in the card, it created us, it created this key for us. So a user's ID. And I think as they taught you guys in the platform, usually you just change that to user ID, right? Okay, fair enough. Okay, so what's the other table I need to make now? Team. Okay, let's do that. So we'll say team z. Yeah, uh, we do want that to be plural. Okay, good. So we got ID in here. Auto increment that guy. Um, a team would probably have what? A name, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Jesus, all right. Let's have a mascot. Okay, cool. We got our right regular stuff, right? Timestamps. Updated at. Ooh. Ah, what happens? Daytime. Okay, cool. So we're good to go there. Now we got to establish the relationship, right? So what is the relationship between users and teams, Linda? Um, users and teams. That's correct, yeah. So what do we call that? Many to many, exactly. So can we use this little yeah. guy down here to create that five. relationship? I can do what? Just touch five or touch one and watch the shape, like the number one. And hit five. Five? Oh, and that'll go, oh, okay, okay. Nice. Cool. Thanks for the tip, man. All right. So does it matter what side I start this many to many from? No. Not necessarily, right? Although it may change the name of the middle table that gets created. Does it? I don't even know. Yeah, so I guess the, the first one that we click on, that would be the start of the middle table name, right? Users has teams. So, I mean, grammatically, that doesn't really sound so great. Users have teams, right? Okay, and then we'll just change this to user ID, uh, team ID. Okay, does anybody have any questions about what why this middle table was created? I, I do. Yes. It, why? <laughs> <laughs> I guess that was kind of the obvious question, right? <laughs> hmm. All right, anyone want to shed some insight on that? Connor? Because uh, you need another table to keep track of the different relationships between teams and users. Yeah. So let's think about this. Could we keep track of all the teams in one user record? Would that be possible? Why not? Well, but I mean, if if it's one field, how am I going to how am I going to store multiple values in it? I mean, we don't generally want to do that inside of it. So, <clears throat> so if I have inside my users table, I have a field for teams. Or teams, right? Because a user can be on multiple teams. These are fields. <clears throat> huh? Yeah, so I mean, again, we're not, this is not a, um, it's not a class right now, but, but inside the database they're called fields. So yeah, I mean, you could think of them as attributes. Well, it's not. But that's kind of what we're talking about. What if it what if it were? So if I had a teams field inside my users table, how would I manage that? Because again, a user can be on multiple teams. So if I have one field and I'm trying to store multiple things in that, that's not typically how we want to use a relational database, right? We only want each field to have one piece of information, not multiple pieces. Okay, so you have Mm -hmm. um, to connect these two things, right? And then you created the user ID for those two teams, right? Or are they just generated? So, the, well, these are going to be coming from here. So the user ID will come from here, right? And then the team ID is going to come from here. 
So that's just to like hook them up. To hook them up. Very good. Yeah, exactly. Is it making a little more sense, Baxter? Or? Yeah? Okay. All right. Any other questions about why why there needs to be a middle table there? Does that make sense to you guys, mostly? Thumbs on this real quick? Yeah? Okay, okay. All right, good. Cool. So this is how we would do it if we were going to create this thing in MySQL, right? And then we'd go through the process of maybe forward engineering it if we're doing it here from MySQL Workbench. Now today what we want to do is we actually want to do it from within the uh, Django ORM, right? So let's open up the project that we were working on yesterday. Yeah, I've taken the liberty of actually adding a few more of you because we only had, um, I think, two people left from yesterday. I had to remove some people. So um, let's go inside of our models there. Are we here in our models file? So right now, we've, we still have this user model. What are the other ones we want to create? Yeah, we want to create a car model, right? Oh, yes. Sorry. OK. What do I need to pass into that, Mark? Yeah. So again, what what does that mean when we put that inside the parentheses like that? <laughs> well, we know it's a class, right? We got the class <laughs> keyword. That much is established. <laughs> Anyone want to jump in on in here? Why are we putting this inside, huh? How do you find the? I know you're a character. Okay. Ah. Yeah. But there I, it was. I know you're a character, but I don't. I don't follow. Like, in the sense that, what are you a character? Well, this right, models dot models. So you can see that's a class right there, right? But where, like, where I don't see that anywhere. It's being imported up here. So see, from Django dot db, we're importing models. And then models has this class called model with a capital M. And then where would that be found? If you were looking inside your virtual environment, you could actually kind of dig through the, the Django files. Okay. So that's, um, so that's now, we're, we're, we don't have our virtual environment right here in this project, so I can't kind of look through it right now. But on your own, if you, if you were to go inside the folder of your virtual environment, you could, you could look for this. It might confuse you though. So, <laughs> so, <laughs> so I'm inheriting the models that I imported. So what models did I just import? You didn't import a specific model. You imported this model class. So all the classes. Or you, I mean, you imported models, and then models has a class called model with a capital M. That's the thing that we're inheriting from. No, you, did, you didn't inherit actual models. We are creating our models inside here, right? What we're inheriting from is a model class. So what is, what is a model class? Think of it as a blueprint, right? Remember we talked about classes, they're blueprints. So we're not inheriting a specific model right now. We're just inheriting from the model class itself. So if we have that blueprint already, is there like no, this is the blueprint that we're inheriting from. This one. That That's would the be one. The, the parent class then, right? Mm -hmm. okay. Correct. So all the classes that we make are children of the model class. Mm -hmm. So when we make a parent class, we're making a parent class as a child to the model class. Well, but these aren't these user these aren't parent classes, are they? Like a like a user or a car is that a parent class to something? Because we're not inheriting not from yet. those. We could make one. Yeah, theoretically yeah. we could, but we're not inheriting from them. Right. So yeah, they're not really parent classes. Okay, all right. So let's drop that in there. Models dot model. All right. What did we say we were gonna have for our car? A car make. A make. I believe, right? 
So we'll say that this is going to be a car field. We'll just say the max length there is 64. Model, right? Was one of them. Okay. Car field. Actually, ah, I'm just going to bring this guy down because I'm lazy. Yeah. <laughs> All right, and then we had year as well, right? Oops. Yeah, you got. <laughs> <laughs> got to do that. So we could do an integer field, right? Okay. Um, we also have our timestamps, which I'm just going to drop in here. Timestamps, cool. And then what else do we have? We said that each car belongs to what? one user, right? Okay. All right. So how are we going to do that? Anyone who's already done this section should be able to fill us in. Somebody's in this section. I know it. <laughs> did you say did you say user? Uh, users. Users? Huh? User, right, because the car is only going to belong one to user. one person, right? User equals. So let's do that. User equals. Okay, and, and then what kind of field is this? Uh, it's going to be a foreign key, right? Um, yeah, many foreign keys. <laughs> foreign car, foreign keys. Yeah. Many foreign key, whoa. <laughs> Take it easy there. All right, so what do we need to pass in when we when we invoke or we create an instance of the foreign key class? That's what we're doing, right? All right. So yeah, we, we do need to put what it's related to. So that's basically going to be the first argument that we're going to pass. So what are we connecting this to? User. Okay, and then the second argument is how do I want this to appear for and in relation to my user? So, so like let's say I've got reference to a user and I want to find out all of his cars. How do I? How do you guys think we want to reference that? Plural. Yeah, plural. That's exactly it. So if we use this argument, if we say related name equals cars. Okay. What that's going to do is it's going to create kind of an invisible field here on our user objects that we'll be able to access all their cars with. Okay. So we won't see it here inside of our models, but it'll be something that when, once I have reference to a user, I can say user.cars.all to get all that user's cars. Okay. All right. Um, that's pretty much all that we have to do, at least as far as now, just to add the cars in. Does anybody have any questions about this before we actually migrate it and add some cars? Yeah. Was that excitement, or did someone yeah. say, yeah, they have a yeah, question? No, I, I, I was excited. Oh, you're excited. To add cars. All right, all right. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty pumped, too, yeah. Wait, wait. Hmm? So in the models, we just create the reference, and then in the shell, that's what we create. Actual instances, correct. Yeah, exactly. So we were inside the shell currently. Let me exit out of there. Clear out of there. Okay. So what do we need to do to actually get this to be inside of our data? Or at least have our car table, right? Because you do want to have that. We've got to migrate. Okay, so what's the first step of that process? Mm -hmm. So do you make migrations? Okay, we are done. So cool. Let's get back inside of our shell, right? Oops. Okay. All right, cool. So let's add some cars. I've got my users up here. Yeah, we do need to do that first. So let's go from apps dot main dot models I'm going to import user and car right all right cool so I've got my users 
let's grab a reference to one of them so that I can add a card or you know add multiple cards for others. Yes. So the add the asterisk for importing everything. Mm-hmm. And then. Um, so that's another thing that you can do. What happens if you put the asterisk right after import? Like it doesn't throw an error, but is it still doing it? Or if you didn't have a space between import and user, would it still work? So I'm just saying for all the classes, right? You mean between user and card? Yeah, it would just import everything. Well, so I didn't specifically put a class, but I was just using the asterisks. Yeah, so if we do asterisk here um, instead, let me make that a little bit bigger. It didn't throw an error if I Shit. had no space between import. And I was wondering if... Oh, really? Yeah, sometimes you can get away with that, but, but it's not <clears throat> always what you would want to do just for readability's sake. <clears throat> so, but yeah, what, oh gosh, excuse me, what, what that's doing, if we do import asterisk, it's just bringing in all the different, you know, in, in this case, we have all the classes that would be coming in. All right, cool. So who do we, for whom do we want to add some cars? Who's got the sickest car collection? Linda's got the sickest car. <laughs> How is it, Linda? You got you got some nice cars. <laughs> oh no! All right, maybe maybe Linda doesn't have the sickest car collection. <laughs> She drives a Rolex. She drives a Rolex. She drives a Rolex. Nice. <laughs> All right, so let, let's go with Brian. Brian, I've decided you have the sickest car collection. So we'll say Brian equals, yeah. <laughs> All right, so how do we get Brian? This is a review from, you, from yesterday. No, yeah, just go grab him. But how do we, how do we get him inside the shell? Okay, user.objects.get, and then I have his ID right here. So his his ID is actually six, right? Yeah. All right. Maybe we should edit his first name. Oh, you want to? Because it should have a Y instead of an I. Oh, actually, yeah, that's probably a good idea. For sure, I can import my actual collection. So it's going to be the Batmobile. Okay. Okay. All right. <laughs> Let's fix that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Brian with the Y. <clears throat> My bad. <laughs> All right, so what do I have to do after I've altered this attribute on the Brian? I've got to save him, right? <clears throat> save. Is there a way to refresh? Change the variable in it? Yeah, so the, the way that we can refresh this is by hitting this little triangle. Yeah, I was just closing it and opening it. Are you really, man? You're making it hard for yourself. All right, so there he goes. He's updated. Okay. Okay. So now I've got this reference to Brian, right? And I want to create some cars for Brian. Cool. How do we do it? Let's see who I haven't. Ah, I haven't called on Kevin yet. Oh, Kevin yeah. and Linda are in the same room together. <laughs> They're two separate individuals. <laughs> it's confirmed. <laughs> All right, Kevin, so I want to create a new car for Brian. How can I go about doing that inside the Django shell? I just got here like 10 minutes ago. Mm -hmm. so I have no idea what going on. All right, all right, fair enough. Well, pay close attention. All right, who wants to help out Kevin? Hands. Somebody can help him. How do we create a car? Yeah. All right. Let's take that a bit further. How do we do it? Call the class that you're going to make something with. Good. So it's going to be the car class, right? Dot objects. Dot create. All right. All right, Brian. So what do we have? So we've got make, model, and year, right? What do you drive? I drive a 2018 Sunday Elantra. Okay. So sick. So <laughs> <laughs> Oops. Senior. Senior. No. 
Hyundai model equals Elantra. I didn't catch the year on that, what was it? 2018, nice. Okay, now um, there's something else we need to add here too, right? Because I'm creating this car object, but we do want it to be connected to Brian. So how are we going to do that? So notice here in our, uh, in our car class, we have this user, right? So I can specify a user inside there that I want the car to be connected to. Okay. So as we're creating it, let's say the user is Brian. And I, and I know the variable is still spelled wrong, but I hope you'll forgive me for that. Why are you still doing that? Oh, just because I'm mean. No, I did in the oh, data in the database, but the actual variable name was still spelled oh. wrong. It's a memory. Yeah. Yeah. That's Sorry about that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I hope you'll let that go. It's a lesson for us. You can understand the difference. All right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we can. Very good. All right. So Brian now has at, has this one car, right? Now, how can I get his one his car? Let's do it. Let's say Brian dot cars dot all, right? Okay, and then we'll do this dot value so that we can actually see what's in there. Values. Oops, yeah. <laughs> My mistake. Okay, there we go. So you can see that what that gave us back was again one of these query sets. So it shows us his whole list of cars. Right now he only has one, right? So okay. if you wrote out all of what Brian was dot I don't think I followed that question. So, like, Can you maybe rephrase of, it? Instead of writing Brian, if you wrote user dot objects dot get id equals five dot cars dot all dot uh -huh. value. That would work. That would work. Yeah. Yep. Totally. Because remember what what that returns when we do the the dot get. It returns a single object. If if one was found. Now if one was not found, what would you get? An error. An error. Correct. Exactly. All right. So good. Uh, do we want to add another car for Brian? Like, let's say, what's the next car you're thinking about? Or like, what do you have your eyes on? Lambo. Uh, Lambo. Honda Civic. That I, moved, I, that I, moved I, up I, real I, quick. Honda, 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 Honda Civic. Civic. That's the car I wanted but couldn't afford. So I got a Civic. Okay. Fair enough. So we'll say this is a Civic. And we'll say it's going to be 2020. You're going to get it next year. 2021. Uh, am I being too optimistic here? All right. All right, cool. So there we go. So again, we got back another car object. We created another one for him. So again, if I run uh, brian.cars.all.values, notice now that we actually have the Elantra in there and then the Civic as well. Okay. Yes, of course. How would we do that? Jessica. Like when you say spit it out, you mean just like print oh, yeah. it, right? Okay. <laughs> spit it out of the code. No. Probably have to loop through them, right? So how, how would we loop through that? So for that data set, for that query set, uh, maybe if you set Brian.cars.all.value to a variable name, that query set equals that or something? Yeah, or, or we could even just loop through it directly. I mean, I could say something like for car in Brian.cars.all. Yeah, so then if we just wanted to print out the make and model, I could say something like print car.make and then car.model, right? Well, because he's he's got multiple cars and we want to 
do something specific with each one, right? For each one, I just want to print out the make and the model. I think I was including the values in that previously. Okay. Does that make sense? How we can loop through those? All right. Cool. Yeah, nice. That was very Alejandro-like. I like it. Okay, so we're pretty good. We added a couple cars. Do we want to add any cars to anyone else? I mean, is this like making really good sense for everyone so far? Or do we want to just move on to teams? The many to many type situation. I have one question. Okay. Can you just print something that you can do in print going to this index and then going to uh, key? Oh, I see what you're saying. Um, could we do it by key? We probably could. It's a, it's a query set. It's a, it's so a, it's, it's, it's like a list-like item, right? So if I do brian.cars.all, and then I specify an index of zero, and then I want it to get the make, yeah, that works. So there you go. Cool. All right. Um, does anybody want to add more cars, or do we want to move on to teams? Could you add cars to everyone at once? Like one like so like the same car? Like, yeah. every, like everyone finishes Cody Dojo and like gets a car. car. <laughs> that would probably require a loop, no? We would, we would loop through each person. Because remember, um, each car belongs to one user. It's not a many-to-many -many type situation yeah. where a car could belong to multiple users and the other way around. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you guys want to move on to teams or cars? All right. Teams? Good. All right, let's uh, let's keep going with our models here. So now we need to have a team model class team. Which one? I was thinking two people could have the same make a model, but the VIN number is different. Mm, yeah, remember we have to think about the car as an individual object, not just like a type, right? Okay. Cool. So here, what do we have for the team? We've got a name, right? And then I think we had a mascot. Yep. Yeah. Oof. All right. Car field. These are pretty arbitrary here, but we'll just say that. Mascot. Okay. And then we've got um, timestamps on this guy. Okay, so what else do we want to add to this team? Yeah, it is. I, I get a lot of uh, mileage out of it, too. Okay, so teams are going to be connected to what again? <coughs> Users, right? Okay, so how do, we want, how do we want to do this? going to be a many-to-many -many field, right? Okay, now here's the interesting thing, is that if you're doing a many-to-many -many type relationship in the Django ORM, I can add the relationship in either team or user, okay? It's up to me how I want to do that. Um, I'm just going to do it down here inside the team class, but you guys could do it the other way if it makes more sense to you that way. So let's say, we'll just say players, I guess we'll call them, right? And that's going to be models dot many to many key, or is it just many to many? Sometimes I forget about these things. It's like um, many, to many. many to many field. Yeah, why well, was I thinking key? Okay, so these are the these are the different types of relationship fields that we can have. So you can have a foreign key, which we saw before. You can have the many to many field, which we're doing now, and then we've got the one to one field. All right. So let's do many to many field. Okay. And then what do I need to put inside this? Yes, the one that we're connecting it to. So we're connecting that to a user. Okay. And then usually I want to add this related name here, right? And 
team? A team, team. How many people think it should be team singular? Nobody. How many people oh. think it should be plural? Everyone. Okay. Well, some of you. Some didn't have any opinion. All right. <laughs> Let's do it plural, right? So that way, when, we, when we're looking at a specific user, we can say teams, and that would make more sense because this user could have more than one team, right? So say teams. Okay. So that's pretty much ready to go, right? Is there anything else we need to do? No. We just need to, what, every time we make a change to our models, we've got to make migrations and then we have to migrate, right? All right. Let's do that. Exit out of here. Okay. Yeah, I mean, ultimately, that, that's kind of what's going on, right? We're saving this change to our database. Save the file. <laughs> Alright, now we migrated, so everything's good. So let's get back into the shell. Oops, shell. Okay, cool. So if I want to create some teams, let's do that. Maybe we'll create like a couple different teams. Alright, Vaughn, well, how am I going to create a team? Workbench? Sure. I don't think I can make this any bigger. Oh, maybe I can't. Never mind. Okay, so yeah, we need to import this first. So let's say apps dot main dot models. I'll take the shortcut here. We'll import asterisk. Okay. Teams dot object. What class do I have here? Team. Team, right? Okay. So team dot objects. What else? Dot create. Okay. <laughs> So the two, the two things that we have here um, before adding players is that we have a name and a mascot, right? Okay. So what do we want to add for name on this of this team? Team Mario. <laughs> All right, I like it. What's your mascot, Mario? <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, paddle, right? Okay, I like that. Mascot equals... Paddle. <laughs> cool. Paddy the paddle. All right. So we just created this team. So let's do, we could do, if we want to look at all of our teams, we could say team.objects.all, right? Dot values. And there we go. We've got our one team. Maybe we'll create like one or two more. What other teams do we want? <laughs> Point taken. <laughs> Team Mark. All right. What's your mascot? <laughs> A bowling ball, right? Yeah. If anyone doesn't know, Mark is uh, a pretty accomplished bowler. <laughs> I know, yeah. I mean, that's almost a perfect game right there. So don't be shy. <laughs> All right. Any other teams? We want one more. Anthony. Anthony. Team Anthony. Team Anthony. Okay. I don't know. Let, let's make it instead of like Team Anthony. Let's call it something else. What, what would you call your team, Anthony? The Anthony's. <laughs> no. That's bad. Team hurt you. Oh, Verdi. <laughs> That'd be a great name. <laughs> so yours would be like a like a cross or something like that. So virtuous. <laughs> I don't know. What do you want your mascot to be? A flower? Uh, himself. <laughs> An orchid. Okay. All right. Very good. Cool. So now we want to we want to add some uh, players to these teams, right? All right. Who wants to be on my team? Me. <laughs> <laughs>
All right, you are in our database. Yes, you are. You are ID of seven. Okay. So let's get Connor equals user dot objects dot get. What am I going to put in here, Baxter? I do, yeah. So say ID and then what else? Uh, ID. Number and the number yeah, and then just equals that number, right? So that's what we're looking for. So we've got Connor, right? Okay, now how are we going to add him to a team? Let's grab a reference to a team, right? First, um, we know that, that my team is the first, so let's just do... Team, whoops, we'll just say Morley team is team.objects.get, and again, we'll just say ID equals one. Okay, cool. So how am I going to add Connor to my list of players? Connor knows how. <laughs> Tell me how to add you. You sure? I'm not, I haven't done this in a while. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> oh, okay. He's, already like, he's already way past that section, right? He's forgetting the basics here. <laughs> All right, so remember, um, each team instance is going to have this invisible field. Or actually, it's not invisible, because here we're saying each, each team has a player's attribute, right? Okay. Dot players, and then I'm going to add Connor. Okay, so now if, if I want to um, get all the players for my team, how can I do it? Brian. Um, is that dot objects dot all dot values or is that? No. Well, not, not this time because okay. right now I, I still have a reference to my team. Oh, okay. Right? I have a oh. specific team already. No. Anyone want to help Brian? Closer. Uh, Alex. Help player? out here. Is that players? Yes, it is. Okay, what else do I want? Linda had this part. What comes next? Dot all, right? Because I just want to get all the players. And then we'll do dot values so that we can actually see them. Okay, so cool. Now inside my player's attribute, I have this query set that includes Connor. So Connor is the only player in there right now. Do I want to add any other players to my team? No, that's okay. Let's see who looks. <laughs> any, anyone else got any, get any Pong skills? Is Morley even on Morley's team? No, because I'm not, I know, I'm, not, I'm just, I'm just overseeing the whole thing. I'm not even playing. He's the team owner. Yeah, I'm the coach. Yeah, so you can get traded. Uh, but <laughs> all right, all right. Going all right. Well, let, let's add you, Linda. You, you've been on my team before. All right, cool. So how do we get a reference to Linda? Linda, you can tell me how to get a reference to yourself. Okay, your ID is four, that's correct. So we've got Linda there. <clears throat> now, um, we're going to add you in the exact same way. So how do I want to do that? So then, Morley created Yep, we have a reference to that. Linda. Excellent. Okay, cool. So let's run that again so that we can see all of the players that I've got. So now I've got Linda right there. You're the first player listed, and then I've got Connor. Okay? Bless you. Wow. That was a hell of a sneeze. All right. Um, the other thing that we want to just know how to do is how do we remove a player from a team? Okay? So let's say 
I've had it with Linda. She missed too many shots. You're out. <laughs> right? How do we do that? Remove. Yeah, very close. So the same thing. We should be able to just specify Linda in here. And then there we go. Linda's been removed. Let me um, print out the values again. So now our query set only has Connor in it, right? So is that, does that, so that just affected the T, right? Like, is, like, I'm still in the data in the original database? Or? Yeah, I haven't removed you as a user or anything like that. Yeah, you're still in there. So, yeah, so let's kind of look at what that table looks like. So here, if I refresh our list of uh, tables down here, we have this new one here. So it's team players. <clears throat> Excuse me. Because the, 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 the team players is the team player right there. Yeah. So, yeah, exactly. So, so there's this many-to-many -many relationship between teams and users. So now here in this table, we actually only have one connection currently, right? So this team ID was, was my team ID, and then that user ID was Connor's ID, right? OK. So if I want to add another person, um, or I'll, I'll just add you back, Linda, because I'm feeling nice. Okay. Um, <laughs> let's make sure that gets added there. So we'll go players. Yeah, she got re-signed. It's a good day. All right, and then if I click this again, whoops, that was, that was not the right table. Let me click this one. So now we've got a new association that was just created. So that ID right there is my team ID, right? And that right there is what, Linda? That's my ID. That's your user ID. That's my Correct. user ID. But then what about the, the ID? Is oh, the ID the in ID? here? Yeah. Yeah. So the reason why it's skipped like that is because you used to, there used to be a record in here when you were on the team the first time, but then I deleted it. So the auto incrementing ID went up to three at that point. So when I added you back, the next possible value was three. So like, because two was already taken? Two was taken. Even though it gets deleted, it doesn't, it doesn't basically get reassigned. That's it. And then the number is just like, the number, yeah, th this is just like whatever my query returned, it's just numbering those for us. So that's not, this isn't really in the, um, this isn't really in the database, only the ID should be in the database, right? Okay. Anything else you guys want to do? Any questions about this? Do we feel pretty good all, all around? Hmm? What about if you had like... Thumbs already? Good. Nice. Uh, several players on your team and you wanted to remove the last one. Yeah, could we do that? We first one. probably could, right? So what if I did um, Morley team dot players dot last. So let's see, how would we do this? What we would do is we'd probably say Morley team dot players dot remove and then inside that we would do morley team dot players dot last right I don't know let, let me type this out and see if this makes sense to you guys dot remove so so that's saying that I want to remove a player right yeah. and then inside that I'm gonna find the one who's the last player okay okay so now if we <laughs> so now if we refresh this here, so we removed you. Okay, so I guess it was going by order of ID then, right? Wait, but if it was ordered by ID, I'll just like seven. User ID was number two. Was it number, what, was it seven? I was seven. Yeah, you were seven. That was the first entry in the, yeah, the relationship thing. So then I guess it just removes by the last ID? That yeah, that's why I was thinking it must have been by ID. So when we did, um, so when we did players dot last, I was just pulling the highest ID of a player. So first, but it did work. I mean, if we want to do something like that. So, but that wasn't the last one in the dictionary. Yeah. 
<laughs> so if you put last arrow, it'll move the last, or if you put a, if you put dot first, it would remove the last person. Well, the thing, the thing is, I didn't actually print out the query set after we re-added you, right? I don't know. Let, yeah, he he was. He's the last person in the in the users table. So if I, oops, dot values. So it looks like every time we're polling this, he's showing up as as the last because he has the highest user ID, right? Yeah. So it's ordered by the user ID, which means that we grabbed him as the last one in, in that query set, and we removed him. So if there was like both higher IDs, like let's say know, like somebody asked for an 11, and they would, and if you added them to your, to your, to your, to my team, to, your team, to my team players, team, to your, huh? She's called Team Morley. To your what? To, to my team, so so the team is an object and then it had that player's attribute, right? So if we add it to the set of players. Okay, so then we, if we did that with a higher ID, then that would be like the last one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the other person would have been last rather than Connor, right? Okay. All right, let's have thumbs on this. I think we're good for the day. Sideways. Sideways. All right. That means you owe me a clarification. <laughs> Kevin's fully sideways. All right, Kevin, ask a question, please. Well, I just want to know what you guys covered in the first 25 minutes I was in here. Watch the video. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> now, I'm not saying that to be mean. It's just obviously I can't recover that in, you know, 20 seconds or whatever. Any other clarifications over here? Because I know we had some sideways. Tom, you had sideways. Yeah, just need more practice. Like need more practice. Okay. Conceptually, did it make sense to you yes. what we were doing? Yes. Adding players to the teams, I, I removing players. Though, like, yeah. So like, I, I understand like the, 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 the concept, but like in like the grander scope of things, like if I was building like some, if I was building like a the website well we're, we're gonna get there I mean this is obviously just through the shell and then as we progress we'll be doing it actually through some kind of an HTML on the front end so we'll have a form where we can kind of add things and so forth so we'll get there. Don't worry about that just yet. I just want to make sure you understand the relationships. So, so it's like to display things like on the, like on the HTML? Correct, yeah. So if I wanted to look at, you know, just pull up my team, I could see all my players, right? Because I could loop through them in my template. Later on, we'll be able to do that. So like if, um, if I have like a website and I have like a bunch of people registering, right? Would that all go to, that would be like in your database for any of your like store? Of course. Yeah, you want to hang on to your users, right? Because if you don't store that in the database, how will I know the next person that, or the next time that person visits my website, I have no idea who he is. Maybe I was kind of tracking him in a session or whatever, but that's not how you'd want to track your users. You want to actually have them create an account so that we really kind of know more about them, right? Okay. All right. Good. I'll stop the video, and you guys can... Uh,